Okay guys, so I'm truck I'm starting up this uh, combustion analysis doing a maintenance here and I want to go ahead and do a quick test. I think this is called like a chemical test and what we're trying to do is we're trying to see if our excess air changes based off of this fan turning on and off. I noticed I had really high excess air. CO wasn't too crazy high. It's about 120, 160 parts per million. I'm going to go ahead and let this run a little bit. We got about 200 parts per million slowly going down. 279 excess air. So we've got our amp draw here. 5.6. Blower mode is pulling about 5 amps, give or take. So we've got about 280, uh, 273 percent excess air which is high that's what that basically was kind of like a red flag to me like hey this is looking pretty high there might be an issue going on with the combustion so I'm gonna let that stabilize for a bit and then we're gonna go ahead and pull, pull the speed tap for the blower make the blower turn off completely and we shouldn't see any change in CO or excess air if we have and the reason being is because if there's excess air being if there's a crack or anything in that heat exchanger it's gonna essentially be uh getting the excess air from the crack downstream of the actual burners which is essentially going to cause our CO to um, increase. Okay just to be sure we're on the same page um, and, and I made it clear I don't know if I've explained it very well in the video the reason why the air the excess air is so high is because wherever the crack is in this heat exchanger is be, it's being um, it's introducing air downstream of the actual burner assembly and in turn that's actually robbing the the burners from excess air which it needs to make sure there's a complete combustion of the flame what's happening is the co is increasing as well as the excess air the reason why the co is increasing is because it needs actual air uh, oxygen essentially for complete combustion. When, when I'm removing the blower fan, what I'm doing is I'm allowing the flame to pull the excess air from the burners the way it's designed to do um, because the blower is no longer cross-talking with the actual combustion gases through the heat exchanger. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pull the speed tap here for the blower. Okay, that's on gas heat. We're gonna see our amp draw plummet. Okay, that's hit the inducer. Now let's watch and see if our excess air moves and our CO. So look at that. CO's gone up some. Excess air, we're at around 270, 260. Oh look, 254. Let it run a little bit longer. 248, yep. Look at the, uh, it's going to keep dropping, 242, yeah, 237, so yeah, we know for a fact there's going to be some sort of crosstalk between the airstream, the um, supply airstream and that heat exchanger internals because that excess air is plummeting rapidly. It shouldn't budge. We don't want to run this too long like this, but oh yeah, 226, it's dropping. It's dropping dramatically. 221, it's gonna keep dropping, but I'm gonna go ahead and run the fan. Don't want to run it too. I mean it's gonna it's it can go out on a high limit. These aren't gonna I mean blower motors fail all the time. 216, 99 parts per million CO. So now watch what happens. I've got it back. If it doesn't go out on a high limit, blower's back running. Watch this stuff, the excess air start to come back up in the CO as well. Ah, oh, shoot, it went out on high limit. So now what I'm gonna do, I've got, I'm gonna pull this pressure switch port off, and I'm actually gonna try this um, manometer test, where you actually hook your manometer. This is just gonna be a, uh, you know, service grade manometer. It's not a precision manometer or anything crazy like that. And I'm going to basically let this thing cool down, but I'm going to make sure that when the blower fan turns on, I'm going to turn the blower fan on and off, and I shouldn't get any pressure. This shouldn't be able to pressurize this heat exchanger at all. So this inducer can't be running. Right now it's just running because it's still cooling off because it went on a high limit. But once the inducer kicks off, I'm going to cut the um, call for heat, 
and I'm gonna go ahead and um, just put the blower on, let the blower run on um, high speed. Okay, let's make sure I want that zeroed out completely. I'm gonna zero her out. All right, that's zero. Might have just been a little bit of drift there. Now what I'm gonna do is run the fan. We shouldn't see, once again, we shouldn't see any, any um, movement. Thirteen amps. Okay. Fans running at high high speed. Point one, but that could just be a little bit of drift. Let that fan ramp up. I'm gonna try covering this up here. What I'm gonna try to do is cover this inlet up. See what it does. Have my hand over the inlet. Nothing. I don't see any change. So what I'm gonna do is turn the fan off. See if it goes down any. Nope. Okay, only thing we can really do is a visual inspection to solidify this. But based off of that chemical test, the combustion analysis, I think we do have some sort of um, crosstalk in that heat exchanger. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to pull this blower motor real quick. Just to get a visual. I'm pretty certain this thing is compromised the heat exchanger itself it's worth it worth taking a look right always make sure you cut your power disconnect out no big deal just getting right into it okay let's take a look here Too good, pretty rusted, but I don't see anything to be too concerned about. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's pretty well rusted out up there. I don't know if you can see that. bad but I don't see any holes or anything crazy huh can't really see up at the top the top looks pretty badly rusted though and uh yeah I don't know all that white stuff it's just, that white powdery stuff is definitely a sign of combustion gases and the rust corrosive sign of combustion gas is getting you know escaping I just don't see the point in where they it's escaping actually so yeah nothing crazy today no holes or cracks that I can see in here, guys. A lot of rust, though, a lot of corrosion. Which is, to me, a sign that something is foul. Something's fouled out. Ah. Let's see if I can get out of here. Okay. Lower wheel looks good, though. Pretty clean. Yeah. Get this thing popped back in here. Evaporator coil, that's legit. 
Let me check these filters real quick. Ah, oh, yikes. Gotta take this off of that. That's it's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Well, at least I have to take it all the way off. Filters are definitely needing needing change. Let's see here. Coil looks good though. All right, so now we're just going to do the classic flame disturbance test, and we're going to see how the flame looks when the blower kicks on. If there's any disturbance, riffling, um, rippling in the flame, just any sort of um, turbulence in that flame, we're going to know for certainty that the heat exchanger is compromised. Nothing crazy. 